Hey guys, before we get into the episode today, I wanted to hop on to let you guys know some of the offerings we have here at DBI. Firstly, we have an upcoming retreat this August. It will be an in-person retreat in our facility in Mantin, Malaysia. It will be two weeks long with Dian Vimal himself. So you get the opportunity to learn directly from him and ask him all your questions. Our facility in Mantin is absolutely beautiful. It's on an eight-acre orchard, so that means tons of fresh fruit. We have a beautiful saltwater pool and tons of wellness activities for you to enjoy. If you're interested in the retreat, we'll link it all down below. But if you guys are looking for something more preliminary, something you can do from your home, we have a ton of online courses which you can find on our website. Firstly, we have the LSDL program, Living a Self-Determined Life program that happens every weekend and is completely free. You just need to sign up on our website. We also have the Six Stride program, which is a self-study course. This one is also available on our website. It's a paid course, but you get a little bit more of an in-depth learning. You guys are also going to be hearing this first, but we will soon be announcing a two-day Lessons in Meditation online program with DB himself. This will be happening on the 20th and 21st of July. It's totally free. You just need to sign up and we'll hopefully see you there. Okay, enough of my yapping. Let's get back to your regular scheduled program. For this episode, we're mm-hmm. going to take a time machine. We're going to enter the time machine mm-hmm. and we're going to go... You're going to enter the time machine and go? 30 years ago. 30 years? And we're going to talk about being 30 for your 30th episode. <laughs> Let's spill the tea on turning 30. Do you remember where you were in your life when you were turning 30? Yeah. I think I would be the, not the most typical person who turns 30. You're looking for an average idea of when somebody turns 30. Let's just talk about your your My 30? 30? Yeah. My 30 was the most incredible period. That's when whatever I realized came to pass, whatever I came to touch came to pass. I think it's 29 plus 30. Mm. Uh, it's one of the most... Uh, Lighted period, I think. Just, it was like a lot of darkness up to the up to age twenty nine. Mm-hmm. I was searching. I did, I was trying. I was meditating. I had a I had gurus. I was studying, and at thirty, just uh, something happened to me. Mm. In the east, they call it awakening or whatever. Let's not go in. That's not important. But something happened to me, and uh, things started exploding. Things started becoming amazing. You know. When hmm. I was 30. And then you came along when I was 31. So at 30 was the the pivoting point. I think I've been working from like when I was 22, 23. Studying, exploring, indulging into meditation. I became a sannyas. I took sannyas. And I lived a life of discipline. I lived a life of a scholar. I studied. I lived poor at one point. You know, just before I turned 30, I was... I was, if I had, like, I don't know, 20 US dollars in my pocket, that would be a big deal. Mm. I had almost nothing. But I was okay because I was doing my discipline, I was meditating, I was studying. And somewhere at 29, the whole thing came together and something happened to me. I woke up. And 30 was, here we go. Mm. And then I went, I went, started teaching, speaking. I built so many things. Life was a, from a very quiet life, which was just you, your mother and me. Uh, just two hours living in a house in Salayang, which is the mm. outskirt of Kuala Lumpur, near place. Which we, probably we barely had three friends, three, four friends. People, like almost, I dropped out of life. Mm. Nobody even knew I existed. I think my parents, your grandparents kind of give up hope on me. A mother's parents also probably went like, oops, what do we have done with our daughter? Hmm. So there's absolutely nothing. And uh, maybe I should tell you this story. For you get it, how, how it feels. I was one day, near that age, like 28, 29, 30. I, one day I was waiting, wanted to take your mother out somewhere. Maybe I made some money. I said, come, come, let's go movie, let's go movie. She says, wait, wait, wait. I'm like, come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Suddenly I said, what are you delaying? I ran up and she said, oh, I'm waiting for my... I don't know whether I should say her undergarment to dry. Mm. Is that the word? Her bra. Ah, to dry. I said, wear a new one. Wear another one. She says, no, I only have two and both are. I went like, 
But she never complained. She never said a word. I was like, hmm. I remember when I first made my millions, I wanted to go buy her Mark and Spencer. <laughs> I actually took her to the store and I wanted to buy it and say, here now, have as much as you want. So to give you the scenario, I was not a traditional monk, but I was a sannyasin. I was meditating. I was a disciple. I was studying. Um, I wanted to live a life of uh, a student, a, a, a meditator. And I was a scholar. I was studying. And, and 29, the whole thing came together. 30, it exploded. And then I went. And then you came along. Uh, at 30, I think your mother... When I was 30, your mother was pregnant with you. Must be, right? Yeah. No, when you... Yeah. Yeah. No, no. You were 31. Because I was born in 96. Yeah. So you, I, I was born when you were 32. Ah. Uh, you think but so? But before you turned 30, because I'm in February. Ah, uh, before I turned yeah. 32. So it's 31. So 30, somewhere in mid-30, you know? And that was like, a, wow, after losing a child before, you were something else. You were... Yeah, you were... You were, wow. <laughs> but it was a very magical time. You know? It was your mother, me... You came along, you, you were pregnant, so it was already the panic of losing mm. a child. It was a very sacred... Um, I don't know whether I want to go back to that time. I don't know whether I want to go back to that time, but I'm so glad we had that time, or at least I had that time. It was like a frontier, and maybe that is what you want to hear, you know. At 30, life gets real for me. Mm. It's no more guessing. Is I landed. I had a mission. I had a direction. I had a, a view. And I, and, I, and I had a state of self that I, I've actualized. Now that I have to actually live it. It's like almost like I got my perfect golf swing. Now let's actually go win a tournament. Mm. Something like that. Or like I got my black belt. Now let's go and get a couple of trophies under my belt, you know. I would say, I don't know whether everybody will come to it at the age 30, but I think everybody should hit that point. They say, showtime. Now it's for real. Now it's no more kidding around. I'm not trying. I'm not lying. I'm not pretending. I'm not playing a role. I'm for real banking everything I have. Mm. And that's when I went on the speaking tour. Uh, everywhere as I could. Spoke a lot. Do you think that experience that you're talking about, right? Like, you know, you kind of spent that time figuring it out. And then when 30 sort of came about, kind of got it together. Yeah. Do you think that's a universal experience? Yeah. But, but some come to it at 40, some come to it at 50. Hopefully you come to it at 30. You know why? There's also the biology. There's also the vigor. The I was stronger. I was young. And I was less scarred. And I'm not so, what do you call that? The... What do you call it? Jaded? Mm. Huh? Jaded? Ah, I was not jaded. I was like, everything was possible. And you need that. I'm kind of jaded. No? Like somebody comes to me now and says something. I'm like, mm, let's look at it. Somebody talk about business idea. I'm going like, okay, let's see. Sounds good. Let's see how it's going to fail, how it's going to go wrong. And, and I think you must never spoil the state when you are not jaded. It's like, let's say you fall in love for the first time. It's not jaded. And it's like, yes, this is it. Second time, uh, you still can. But there will be a time when you're like, no, I don't know. You know even if you meet somebody for real, you go like, eh, I've had. So I think 30 is you have enough experience, not enough abuse yet. By 40, you're already there. By 40, you're like, oh my God. I, 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 I've like, I'm meeting reality. By 50, people can be broken. By 50, people are like, nah. When we see a couple falling in love, the 50-year-old man will look and go like, yeah, good luck, son. Mm -hmm. Like they go to a wedding, they go like, mm-hmm. Let's see. I like the 30. I like the 30 mm -hmm. because you know, I, you are not jaded. You are like, and, and those are the people that make it. Now, 100 people go out unjaded, let's use the word unjaded, with all the energy, even five make it, it's worth it. Mm. But at 40 and 50, 
you never get the hundred. Like life has kind of worn you down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, uh, you kind of like ah, uh, you got, and and that is because you were naive, mm. right? But sometimes I think the state of naive. Wow! If I know what I know now, would I be that excited at thirty? No. But if I was not excited at thirty, I wouldn't be where I am now. Mm. So maybe the point I'm making is, ah, uh, like at thirty years old, you put it to the test. You go, you test it out. You, you try with that innocent eye, with believing. But not with the same sort of naivete that you have in your twenties. No, twenty. You don't even know you're naive. Twenty, you're an idiot. No, twenty. You think you know everything. Yeah, twenty. You're an idiot. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say <laughs> that way. At twenty, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. It takes ten years. By thirty, you kind of know what you're talking about. Yeah. But you don't have that experience you may get at forty. Let me not make an age limitation. Huh? Anybody will come can come to that stage. Let's get it for real at any age. And I've watched people at seventy they don't get it real. Appa talk this way. Huh? I have many people who come to learn with Appa. For over the years, thousands of people have come. I always wait for them to say, "Come, let's do this for real." Mm. Come on! They never arrived there. I've had one gentleman who was uh, I don't know why I'm mentioning him. He was with Krishna Murthy, and he came to study with Appa. He was a nice guy. He must have been late seventies now. No, he never got started. I'm like, "Come on!" And he was with me for I don't know he's been with me for like 20 years, you know. And I'm like, and I think for some time ago I told him maybe this is not for you. You will mm. never get there. And that stage is age 30. I'm talking about it in astrology. They call it the Saturn return, 29, 27 to 29 years old Saturn return. What it says is now it's for real. If I fall, it's going to get hurt. Mm. It's like I'm walking on a tightrope. I don't have a safety net. Hmm. If I fall, I'm going to break my leg or something. Until then, you are like you you are you are messing you around. Back. So now the question I ask, huh? the age thirty is we just using as an age, lah. When is it for real? Like when when I met your mother, I don't know why I talk about this all the time. That was for real, and I was twenty three. One look, and I said, "This is it." I was not trying. I was not. What do you call that? I can see how naive I was. I was mm. What the hell were you thinking? What what was I? I'm now when I look at it, what am I thinking? I should have waited ten more years. But I'm glad I didn't. You know, mm. I needed that naiveness. I needed to make. I don't think I made a mistake, but mm. I think I needed to, to make be whatever that blind. They, yeah. You see, when I was a kid, eh, I swam across um, in Marsingla. There's something called Pula Babi Besa. Babi Besa, <laughs> because they wrap pigs there. I think the distance, and but how much would be three, four kilometers under the, the ocean? I remember at ten years old, I was looking. I'm going to swim. I'm going to swim across. I'm going to swim across. I think about fifteen or sixteen. One day I swam. I just jumped and started swimming, and I crossed it. I went to the other side. And now when I think about it, all alone, what the hell all were you alone. thinking? Yeah. All alone. Yeah. Nobody wanted to come with me. What the hell were you thinking? I would not want if I have a son or a daughter to do that, but I'm so glad I did it too. You know, three point three to four kilometers can swim. No la. ocean, ma. It current, and they used to have sharks there. <laughs> I mean, at least my own imagination. Yeah. But I'm thinking to myself, will I do it now? Hell no. Mm. No. But what I'm saying to you is, ah, uh, do not underestimate the child enthusiasm, which is. Teens, right? Mm. At twenty onwards, I think it's a speculation. One is you want to be Spider Man and you want to be John Travolta. At twenty, <laughs> you're you you're showing your age with that John Travolta yeah, reference. Yeah. No, at twenty, Anba, is is at twenty. I think you are like, you you feel I can be anything. You feel like you. I know who I am now. Yeah, it's okay. But no, false knowing. Yeah. We call it. We call it. Eh? We call it. We call it. Uh, I don't know what is imagination stage. Uh, False knowing stage, mm. getting it for real stage. Thirty is you get the thing for real. Forty, 
I'm saying you know what can happen and what cannot happen. Hmm. So we are going from a state of what was that? Twenty was what? Uh, twenty was fa uh, false knowing. False knowing to doing it for real, to know actually what can be done. It, it's like what you're saying is almost like the thirty. The period of being in your thirties is kind of one of the most most like, important period, and also the most the like the first time things are very real. Yeah. And and if you fail, you suffer by it. If you win, you you glorify. Now it's it's for real. It's not go kart driving. It's Formula One. Mm. You are you are doing it. You know you are you are doing your thing. And and I think now now let me put my correction. Eh? I happen to arrive there at thirty. Some may arrive there at forty. Some may arrive at fifty. But hear me, if you arrive it at forty and fifty, it's late. You know. You are tired, right? Like a lot of people who become enlightened become enlightened at fifty. They say forty and above forty, usually fifty. Sixty is very rare because you don't have the energy for it. They do. Some do become enlightened at sixty, seventy, eighty. Got Buddha became enlightened at forty. He got real at thirty. He said, "I need to know what is the meaning of life." He went searching. At forty, he attained to it. I started at twenty. I'm saying I got it for real at thirty. By forty, I knew the reality of the world. At forty, I saw what I was doing for real, right, and how the world will respond to that. Mm -hmm. At forty, right. At fifty, I had the wisdom of this: what will work. So. I think you are lucky. I don't think you can get for real at twenty. Maybe a few people. I don't know, because you're too young. According to me, like according to what I've observed, thirty is the sweet spot. You got to get it. You got to. You got to like now. Now is the time. But hear this, huh? I give an example. Huh? I used to jump off uh, cliffs or bridges, you know, into the river, high places. We find. But you were one naughty child, weren't I was. you? I was a horribly naughty child. I was curious. There is one truth, Nan. But you climb and not very high, Nan. But two floors, three floors, Nan. Uh, three floors, maybe four floors, I think. When you are up there for the first time, eh, there's a moment, you know, for real. I'm doing this. Go back. I don't know whether I can do it, mm. but I know I want to do it. I'm doing it. I don't know whether I'll succeed, but I'm doing this. And remember, looking down, looking back, looking down, looking back. It's like when we made the movie Lanba. Talk, 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 talk. Suddenly, we were making a movie. This is for real. Millions of dollars involved. Things can go right. Things can go wrong. We can mess it up for real. For real means there is consequence. For real means there's a price to pay. For real means you are at stake. Uh, so now, if you use thirty as an age, can we put ourselves at stake? Now, if you ask me what happened at thirty, I put myself at stake. Here, this is me. This is what I believe. This is what I've become awake to. This is what I've realized. This is my solution. The other day, I met a boy. You know, I met him in the early days. That means in my thirty-two, thirty-three, the early days when I was doing. I haven't met him for a long time, and I, and that time I was teaching him about creation, about creating reality. He he looked at me for a while and he said, "I don't know whether I learned from you, Master, but you definitely are living it. Mm -hmm. I can see from where to where you are. I can see you have lived it." It was very nice of him to say that. It was for real. I'm putting myself on the line. I'm putting myself to be tested. I'm putting myself to see how well the world accepts it. Now, what was the reality? I woke up at forty. Not many would be able to grasp what I'm saying. Very small group of people. No, not many. Mm -hmm. At fifty, what I'm, where am I at? Where was I at? I was more working on the preliminary work for them to get real, the base work, mm -hmm. all that that is preventing them to get real. Now that I'm going to touch my sixty, I 
I am beginning to recognize how much is in your hands too. I have done my part. Now they have to do their part, which means they have to get real. So I'm waiting for them to turn 30. <laughs> That's a beautiful way. I've said, <laughs> I've done, I've created, I don't know, 150 books, 200 books. I have done so many programs. I've created so many insights. It's very little in my hands now. I'm looking for them to turn 30 and for real to put it to test. It's like this, huh? when I met my teachers, my masters, my gurus, I met. I think the different I and the others were, I was for real. They said, jump, how high? Do this, let's get it done. I was 30 when I met them, but I was not 30. I met them in my 20s. Mm. But I had a, because I, I had a martial art master when I was 11. Mm. So I was already trained to be for real, you know. It's like mm -hmm. he's going to punch me for real. So I better block for real. So when I met my masters, I was in a 30th brain, 30-year-old brain in my 20s. So now, we use the 30 in astrology, they call it Saturn written. It's a very significant, 24 is Jupiter written, 30th is Saturn written. Jupiter written twice, Saturn written once. What it indicates is, is it for real? Now let me warn you, huh? Out of a hundred people I meet, I think this is going to be bad. I need uh, Paul, I need Chuck Fu to verify this for me with data. I think less than three to seven percent become for real. That means I'm saying less than three to seven percent people are age 30, even though they can be 60. No, but do you also think that that is because we are, I'm 28 now, right? And so I'm been fed this idea that the 20s are the best time of your life and because of that narrative now that it's i'm just two years away from 30 you almost feel like your whole like the 30 your age is like pushing you back and you're trying to like run and stay in your 20s and not age up to that point that people don't even want to accept that they're past the 20s no you know why you don't want anything to be for real remember 20 at the it's an age you think you are this, you are that. It's not for real, you know. Mm. Like for me, if a 20-year-old boy talks to me, I said, mm. No, and also the journey in the 20s, yeah. it's, you are just all over the place. Right. And, and you want to remain all over the place. Yeah. Because you know why? You don't want it to be for real. You don't want to know as you are, what you do, there is consequence. And also... A thing that I also recently read was they talked about the age of 27 and they talked about it more for women than men, but it applies across the board. It's the first time in our lives that we are not young anymore. Not in terms of, we're not old by any means, but when you're 24, 25, or 22, oh my God, you're so young. Mm. You're so young. And there's a comfort in that statement. I can do which, anything. Which means you can postpone living for real. Yeah. And I can get away with anything. Yeah. And everything that I do that's a little bit successful, oh my God, she's so young and she's working this job. Suddenly at 27, they're like, oh, good. Mm. And you're like, uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm very accomplished for working, doing the bare minimum. Can you please compliment me? But no, because it's getting for real. I think it's a biological maturity. Eventually, I think the doctors will figure out it's a, it's a time the brain becomes mature. There are a lot of theories about it. Now. 25 for women. <clears throat> I don't know if what's the men is a bit slow, a bit lah. <laughs> I think so. I think so. But my argument, not my argument, my insight to you is people never come to be for real. In my observation, less than 7%. Mm. For real. In every aspect, they get married, they may get married for real. If they do a job, for real. They choose a career, for real. They are banking on it. Good or bad, I'm saying 7%. Only within the 7%, you will see success or something worth admiring. Hmm. In this 7%, maybe 30% of it out of the 7%. I think people put too much of an emphasis on turning 21, 2021 20, versus that 30 is like a negative milestone. Yeah. But when I look at my my girlfriends, I spent some time with them last year and they're all <clears throat> mid, like 23, 24, 25. And I watched them so manic. So, and I just had that manicness like one, two years ago. And I looked at them and said, don't worry guys, this manic feeling, it will pass yeah. Yeah. and it will be so much better. 
and we just don't see how actually sitting in that rooting in that things getting for real is a great thing great thing and 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 you know what you you, you are now aiming for the 40th brain mm. at the age 40 you have a brain you know what's the age 40 i got this mm. i am where i want to be for me at 40 was very interesting also there was a lot of crisis a lot of uh, that's when we went to australia yeah there was a that's that's a story for another episode. <laughs> no, but 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 I I think that was the best thing ever happened. It was my graduation from my thirty to fortieth. Am I who I say I am? Thirtieth, I'm doing it for real, right? Thirtieth, I'm saying I'm mm. going to be a, a MMA boxer. I'm going into the ring. At forty, I was I. Mm. Did I? Make You're taking it? stock of it. Ah, did I make it or not? It is either way. It doesn't matter. If I am the the the, the martial artist, if I am the philosopher. If I am the guru or not, that age will tell me whether I am not, then I can be right by that. Mm. So 30th you begin, 40th you land, 50th you gloat in it, <laughs> 50th you don't even want to explain yourself. As you yourself. should. Huh? At 50th you don't even want to explain yourself. You are, you, are, you, are, you are where you are. And I am saying this not as an age, you know, as a state of brain mm. for real, then actually seeing how is it for real in the world? Right? Mm. Like for me, what I see, 7% of the world has a possibility to embrace what I'm saying. The only thing I can't tell who is that person, who is that 7%, it's not within me to say, but only about 7% have and I know that I'm rich, that, that's what I'm working towards, right? But now, what you are doing with me, and I'm hearing a lot of good feedback everywhere. You're like, welcome. I was surprised people are going like, I really thought this conversation with you and me, <clears throat> I don't know how it will go. I, Same. Not, eh? Same. I didn't even know that <clears throat> to think that it's a conversation between a father and a daughter and that would be something that people love. We didn't start it like that. No, we, I was, I'm the producer. You are the star. <laughs> okay, I'm the star. <laughs> I think the value it is given people is... Uh, I'm very surprised. It means there must be more than 7%. Or there is a huge percentage of people that are gravitating. And from there, everybody has the time for 7%. Mm. And I can't tell the whole humanity there's only 7%. I think at any one time there's a 7%, you can be any one of that group. I don't know how the metric works. But I'm so glad they're thinking about it, they're sharing it, they're writing. I'm like, wow. Wow. But what is 30 today we talk about? Getting it real. For me, 30, it was for real. Before we end, one, one advice you wish you had gotten when you turned 30. Think of, okay, wait, let's set the scene. What was your 30th birthday like? Any recollection? Where were you living? 30. 30? I think in the apartment there. Not Manaraduta. No, 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 no. That came in Aishi. That was later. In Salayang? Yeah. In Salayang. Uh, Kasamila, I think. Kasamila. So you're know. in this like dingy apartment in Salayang with Amma? There's nothing. Maybe your mother made me a cake or something. Would she have made a cake? Probably. She would do something. Yeah, yeah. I don't bother so much about my birthday and all that. There was definitely the Ikabili Sambal present. What, 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 what is it? What do I? What is a piece of advice at that time in your life? You just now knowing, looking back, remember that moment where you, you, are, you I, aged up? What is I, advice? I wish I knew a few things. I'll tell you a few things. I wish I knew what Paul Fyatt speaks about as, as drillers. Hmm. Oh my God. The Thai got entangled with drillers. And I wish I knew. I had this this kind of a pink glasses, you know, like everybody's love and light and everybody's beautiful. Everybody's going to love what I'm going to say because I'm liberating you. Mm. Everybody is going to love freedom. And I and I realize, no, not everybody loves freedom. They might love freedom for themselves, but they don't love you being free. Exactly. So that was one thing. Next thing is that I am very specialized. Somebody would have said, what you have to offer a very small group of people will be interested in. Many people might enjoy it. Like if I'm a filmmaker, many people will watch the movie, but interest in the art of filmmaking, 
a very small group of people, mm. right? Another thing I wish I knew when I was 30 was, no, I wish I knew, I thought what I did was important. What I'm doing is important. I wish I knew the people that I'm doing it for are far more important. Which is your mother, you guys. And it took me a while to, first I thought what I'm doing is very important, very important. And I was like focusing on what I'm doing. Actually, what I'm doing is not important. It's only important because there are people who are important in my life. Yeah. My students, the people I love, I care. And I think, what, I, what would I have known? Eh? Don't be persuaded by others to feel bad for them. Don't be persuaded by others to buy into their stories, which I think I kind of bought a big time. You know, buy into people's sad stories and people's... Um, I wish I had more of a clinical psychology. I wish I had more of a psychiatry study background. Because I didn't know they were using those stories to suck my energy, redirect me. You know what I mean? I wish I had a better handle on people and the play. Mm. Like, I kind of knew me. I knew what I wanted to do, who I am, that I knew. But I sure the hell didn't know people. And it took mm. a long time to get to know. I, I think, think for me, okay, okay, I give you, I give you, I give you. I'm, I'm come on, you. wrap it up with a strong piece of advice here. Yeah. Not to be so easily impacted by people's story and situations. Hmm. Not to wake up so fast, too eager to help, to take care, that I wish I, I had that. And I think, yeah, that would be my... And I don't think I want to give anybody an advice. That would be my insight. And if I guess looking back and be like, it's all going to work out. Yeah. I wish I had a psychic telling me, it's all going to be fine, sir. You're Don't going to be worry. perfect. I didn't know that. And that, that's what makes it real. And also that's what makes it work out. <laughs> yeah. But, but one thing I can tell from this age, very few things really matter that much. Mm. Don't sweat the small stuff. That good? Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you. you.